What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction video. Today, we're checking out Mason Cox. He's American, playing in the Australian Football League. Glad to be back to AFL videos. You guys enjoyed my first one, reacting to like basically the overall rules. You guys recommended Mason to react to, so we're checking it out. He's six foot 11, okay, from Texas. Played basketball for Oklahoma State. Pretty impressive as Division One basketball. He was six foot 10 playing, obviously six foot 11 now. Pat McAfee, he uh, is a former punter, one of my favorite punters of all time in the NFL. I listen to his podcast now, but I know he's a big fan of Mason. They did like collabs or something like that. Um, but yeah, one of you guys recommended it, so I'm checking it out. Hope you guys enjoy. When Mason came to us, no American player had ever played a senior game of AFL footy. So it's yeah, I'm just generally curious how this process no happens. Ever done it. Don't believe in never. So I, I thought, I didn't know he played basketball. I thought he had like a punting background in the NFL. Not in the NFL, but in college. I went to Oklahoma State University. So I started out playing basketball when I was a freshman. He has like a weird accent, like Southern and Australian. We played at the rec center and there was a GA at the women's team. And she asked, would you be interested in helping out? Pretty much called the dream team. And they played against the women's team and practiced other teams and played against them. I was kind of like, yeah, cool. Like, what do I get out of it? And she goes, oh, we'll give you a free pair of shoes and maybe some kit. And I was like, sweet. The men's team saw me training with the women's team. And one of the coaches said, who's that massive dude who's playing with the women's team? Like, why don't we have someone like that? I was in way over my I mean, head. listen, six foot 10. And I was just a body bag. We got a call. They wanted me to go to LA to try out for this thing called AFL, of Aussie Rules Football. And we both looked at each other and was like, what the hell is that? I wonder what's up with his accent, though. Like, was he born AFL with that accent? Like, hits. or did he develop that over the years? I don't know. Look at those hits, though. He's a tall, skinny dude. Just Better not get a collapse lock or something. Is this really a sport? <laughs> oh, I'd already accepted a six figure paying job at Exxon Mobil. So I went to the tryouts. Everyone that was there was interested in myself. It became pretty serious pretty quickly. That week, I threw the cap in the air. You know, I got the degree on stage. I made my parents proud. A week later, I flew to Australia and my life changed. The whole concept of me coming to Australia was just to give me a showcase of what AFL was. Saw my first AFL game, sat next to a North Melbourne player. He explained to me, you know, that's six points. That's a point. Hits the post, it's worth a point. You know, they point the opposite direction whenever they really mean that way. And at the end of it, I remember he goes, okay, cool. So these are the teams that are interested in you. Here's the contracts. Jeez, um, that easy. Let me know what you think. The international rookies are whopping 211 centimeters, the same height as Aaron Sanderlands. Looks quite exciting. So I guess that's all it takes, basically, to be tall and somewhat athletic. I remember getting on the plane, and I thought, Of course, there's hate already. What have I just done? I've just given up five years of hard work and thousands of dollars of education to go play a sport I've never heard of in a place I've never been with no friends or no family. And, and it's no a work. risky uh, chance, though. I stuck a footy in my hand, and I thought it was uh, pretty much rugby ball. Like, I had no idea. The kangaroo skin and a Sharon is like the name of it. And I don't know, like, it was all so foreign to me when I first started. His kicking, his kicking was quite average. It was a crash course, essentially, of just what AFL was. Craig McRae and Anthony Rocker spent two and a half months with me and come around training the first day. It was sink or swim, really. We do this one drill, and you get a handball off to the coach. And of course, Box is the one who you're handballing to go to handball to him and i just remember looking at it and i look back and going okay we've got a bit of work to do <laughs> i like locked eyes for a second and i could just see in my mind just what have we recruited players generally a lot going on but mason's still trying to work out this new game whether he fits if he fits am i embarrassing myself but at the end of the year i got to the point where i was thinking i might actually feel comfortable in an afl game Was the first Imagine playing in that. Came out and said, Look, Jeez. Came debut, and that week was a massive week. It's Anzac Day, obviously. And it's one of the biggest games of the year. The crowd's 90,000 plus. The stadium is massive. It just leans over the top here. So that's challenging enough. I walked out there and I was ready to puke. I was that nervous. <laughs> I don't I was understand freaking being. out. You know, I didn't know what to do. And I was thinking, don't screw up. Just whatever you do, don't screw up. Don't screw up. He's shitting himself. And I can't imagine what it's like to try and drop the ball that extra foot and a half to get it onto your foot. My hands would have been like this, holding that ball. Mason Cox. He rides it home. Got it. Can you believe an American in his first game did not get the first goal on Anzac Day? Didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. 
Not that we needed to keep him grounded, but it was our job to keep him grounded. Stands at the MCG to steady this one. It's bloody hard. It's a big step from the VFL footy that he was playing to playing AFL footy. At the end of 17, I was playing VFL, you know, I'd gotten dropped a few times, we were playing small. He had to set himself a new goal of being one of the best forwards in the competition. Saturday night football at the Coliseum. Comes through Cox, drops what he should have taken. Oh, he couldn't work out the big fella. Mason Cox here, guys. This was just off the ball. I had the worst game of my career, I can probably say that pretty comfortably. I don't think I had a single mark the whole game and had maybe six touches or something and get suspended for the next week. Probably a low moment in my life, I'd say, of thinking, do I choose the right decision? Look at this. Cox has been left alone. He plays on. He's gone. He's gone. Whatever Mason Cox can do as a permanent forward, I suspect Ben Rude can do better. I said, you know what, this is a last ditch effort to show him what you're worth, to show him you can do this as a job. This is your career that you want to do for the rest of your life. What a beast this Tiger has become on and off the field. 22 consecutive wins of the MCG. It's hard to get your head around it, to be honest. We played Richmond twice. And this is actually very interesting. I'm actually this could be the biggest game that Mason Cox never gets a kick in. Prelim final MCG. Matt Stebby holds the ball aloft. Richmond take on Collingwood. It happened pretty early. Soccer off the ground, straight into the waiting arms of Talor. Cox is the biggest man there. He was in, it was clunk, clunk, clunk. Cox again. Oh, he's getting better. He's getting bigger and better. His hands are on, mate. They, they, they just stuck. Sets it up. Cox again. I cannot believe it. It's kind of making it too easy. That I would fail. I, I, I'm terrible at kicking. That's crazy. Could you have pictured that four years, five years earlier with the guy that handballed over the top of my head? Um, definitely not. Good for him. I don't believe in ceilings. I don't believe in people setting limitations on others. I think if you're motivated enough and you care enough, or that determined to get to wherever you want to go, it's it's possible. Good video, honestly. You can't write the script any better. Well, you could have. We could have won the grand final. Imagine that story. I'll be honest, guys. That was a very, very interesting video. Um, I definitely enjoyed watching that. Definitely cool. I mean... Not much. That was probably this is probably the only scenario where I ever saw, besides like in soccer a little with Christian Pole second something like that. But you know, other than that, I really never saw like or heard of any Americans, you know, being popular in other countries. You know, taking over a a sport that's usually dominated by that specific country. You know what I mean? Um, we saw, of course, in, like in the NBA, we see former players go to like the Chinese basketball leagues and stuff like that. But like obviously, basketball is America's main sport. No, it's not like an American go to India to play cricket or. Um, you know, I'm going to England or New Zealand to play rugby. You know what I mean? So that's it's definitely cool. Definitely a proud moment, of course. Um, I don't know how, like what he's doing now. Let me look at his Wikipedia real quick. I don't know if he's still playing. He's 31 years old, so I mean, that's a good age to still play. Um, so he still yeah is active for the Collingwood Football Club in Australian Football League. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I'm I'm like really focused on is like his, his accent. I. He had like an Australian accent, but he also had like the Southern accent being from Texas, obviously. But like, I don't know, did he did he develop that accent like over the years being in Australia or what? I don't know. That's uh cool. But uh yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, help me get to seven thousand subscribers. Let me know what you guys think of this video. I'm out, guys. Peace.